Hello, my name is Riikka Purunen. I come from Aalto University in Finland. In today's ALD 2020 session on the, uh, simulation modeling and theory of ALD, with my colleague from Delft, I would like to share some of our views on the fundamentals of ALD and the importance of getting the picture right. My name is uh, Ruud Holmer. I'm a professor in chemical engineering at Delft University, and it's a pleasure to, uh, to join Rika in this uh, presentation and discussion on ALD fundamentals. So ALD has uh, grown rapidly in the past years and decades. Um, ALD was invented twice independently in USSR under the name molecular layering and in Finland under the name atomic layer epitaxy. And uh, here you see a graph that shows the number of doctoral theses made related to ALD um, in different years and different countries. This is data that we have compiled in the virtual project on the history of ALD and you can uh, find it back on the website. Here I have overlaid some events uh, related to uh, ALD starting from 1985 when the electroluminescent displays went uh, into production and uh, ending in 2000, 2018 when Tuomo Suntola, the Finnish inventor of uh, ALD, received the 1 million euro Millennium Technology Prize for his achievements. Um, I would argue that uh, ALD has grown really rapidly, um, technology first and fundamental thinking second. And uh, already 15 years ago, I uh, wrote a review article uh, where I discussed some of the problematic historical assumptions on the surface chemistry of ALD and uh, problematic terminology. So that's, that's when really my discussion on the fundamentals uh, started. This same review, also um, discussed the history of ALD and compiled a uh, periodic table of ALD processes. And these two have lived on on the virtual project, project on the history of ALD and also in the ALD database now updated by Atomic Limits. In this presentation, we continue. The discussion started long ago and uh, we were really happy to find that there are very recent uh, articles that also are much in line with, uh, with the critical thinking that we are doing in this presentation. The outline of our talk is as follows, so the introduction we already covered. Um, this is about getting the picture right, so we review uh, quickly ALD cartoons that have been developed over the years and we also have tried to develop our own and improve the, the, from those pictures uh, to get the picture right. Um, then we discuss some uh, uh, characteristics of ideal ALD. What is it and what is it not? Uh, can we define an ALD temperature window and what does it mean? And we also uh, take out two uh, concepts that are used in a little bit problematic way in the field of ALD, uh, namely the adsorption isotherm and uh, treating the growth per cycle sometimes as a rate. So now I give the voice to Rilis. Yeah, because the uh, first important thing we think is how to, to represent uh, the ALD uh, approach in a simple way. Uh, over the years, uh, right from the start actually, when it was the first time invented in the Soviet Union, uh, people were making sketches, uh, schematic representations of how they think ALD was, was running. And typically uh, following the ALD cycle, you did it by, for example, four different uh, cartoons, but we've taken here um, uh, from from a number of, of different representations, had the, the final cartoon after one or after a few uh, cycles. Now, if you follow those over the years, uh, and, and perhaps the less important thing is that you see that we are moving from black and white to color. But more important, what what uh, is seen in many of these uh, these cartoons is that they are very regular in structure. Actually, only uh, the one of, uh, of, of Rika in 2005 and Parsons and, and co-workers in 2011 show some irregularity. And another striking fact is that most of them represent that per cycle you get uh, a full monolayer. And well, that actually brings us back to the next slide, to the early days uh, of ALD, uh, when uh, Dr. Suntala invented atomic layer et uh, epitaxy in, in Finland. He was studying the, the zinc sulfur uh, process and he expected there indeed to get a full monolayer per cycle. And in the beginning, he was actually 
uh, disappointed that he didn't find that, but only found one third of a monolayer. Yeah, and thought, well, the process is not working as I thought it was. There is something wrong. This is this is not good. The next, it actually appeared that that was the nature of the process. That indeed you do get one third of a monolayer. So in other words, the very simplified representation that still today is often given of ALD, a monolayer per cycle, like for example here in this sketch uh, that uh, uh, shown in Wikipedia, uh, the Wikipedia lemma on, on, on ALD, but, but also in many other of the cartoons that I just showed, actually you make it too simple. This is not what is happening. In practice, we have one third of a monolayer. So we think therefore it's better to, do, to show a more realistic cartoon. That's what we've trying uh, to come up with over here. In this case, we have a cartoon where indeed only one third of uh, a monolayer is being deposited. And in the past months, uh, uh, Rika and, and Iris Gulas and I have been iterating over this, this cartoon to, to try to, to get it better and better. Um, uh, and also shown that ligands are typically quite a bit larger than the central metam atom. And that due to the steric hindrance, you can't indeed not use all surface groups that are available. And when people are uh, newly entering the field, we think from a didactic point of view, it's important to show right from the start that this is typically how ALD works. Uh, and you hardly ever get full monolay growth at once. Right, so no full monolayer of the ALD grown material. That, that shouldn't be a characteristic thought for ideal ALD. Well, when you are doing modeling and simulations, you start from a computational perspective and you have to uh, de define mathematical equations that, that uh, describe the reactions. How do we actually uh, describe those? How is ideal ALD from, from that perspective? In many uh, review articles and papers, you see people saying that um, ALD is based on saturating reactions or saturated reactions. Some uh, use terms like self-terminating or um, mm, self-limiting reactions. What do those actually mean? In this slide, we have collected some uh, variations of, of how uh, in different, with different assumptions, the amount of adsorbed species versus time uh, varies. And uh, here we see first the one that we typically associate with ALD. So the amount absorbed, it increases, it levels up, it, it uh, finds uh, some, some value where it then stays, and it stays the same when we are purging the system. So this, uh, this version is based on saturating irreversible reaction. Um, it's not self-evident that we uh, receive, we, we achieve these characteristics. So uh, we can have growth that is not saturating. For example, continuous CBD would not saturate to a level, or we could have processes that are not, um, not irreversible. Uh, chemical processes are by, by their nature, typically reversible. So if we would have completely reversible reactions, we would actually lose the amount of adsorbed species when we purge the system. You can also imagine different ways, uh, different combinations of, of these. So we would argue that from um, like a theoretical uh, point of view, theoretical ideal ALD would be based simply on saturating irreversible reactions. And we are talking of gas solid reactions, that means chemisorption. And that settles to a certain level where, uh, where adsorption uh, process has been completed and, and we have a full adsorbed layer. This is also a monolayer, but a different type of a monolayer than the ALD grown material. We always get, get to that point. Another widely used concept in the, the ALD community is the ALD window or the ALD temperature window. And there's also been quite some debate over that. It's often depicted uh, with a cartoon similar to the one that you see here on the, on the right hand side. Um, and GPC uh, given as a function of the temperature and at very low temperatures we, we have a strong dependency of the GPC on the temperature then we get this window where actually the GPC becomes independent of temperature and then again at, at higher temperatures outside the window on the right hand side you get a strong dependency on, on the temperature again. Now, as said there's been quite some debate for example here uh, like we see uh, we show you a few tweets uh, from one half year ago where this was being uh, discussed and our colleague Sean Barry put forward, well, I don't believe in, in the ALD window. Well, I think that indeed uh, 
this is not the right way to represent it. So we believe that this is a wrong representation, that you don't have an uh, independency of temperature within the ALB window. Nevertheless, in our view, it's still a good idea to maintain the concept of the, the ALD window, but uh, it's a bit more complex again, not, not, not that simple. Um, it shows the dependency on temperature and that's different than outside it. So you have a change in trend uh, on the dependency of temperature of the GPC, and but that can be uh, increasing, decreasing or more complex as you've seen the four plots over there. So the dependency on temperature is typically different than outside it, but doesn't need to be constant. Um, then we wanted to highlight the concept of concept of adsorption isotherms. Uh, sometimes people talk about these in ALD, but they uh, more often mean uh, something else than the real adsorption isotherms with them. So adsorption um, isotherms are often used for characterizing materials, especially uh, high surface area materials by physisorption or by chemisorption. And then one measures the amount of adsorbed species as function of equilibrium pressure here equilibrium pressure. It's an equilibrium system. There's no change with time. Here we have an example of uh, what the Langmuir adsorption isotherm for single site reversible adsorption would look like. Um, this looks a little bit similar as uh, what you would get as a function of time for typical, well if we use that definition of ideal ALD, uh, saturating irreversible reactions. So this, this is the um, calculated surface coverage as function of time for such a reaction, also with the Langmuir adsorption uh, assumption, single site adsorption, but now irreversible in this case. And you see that these uh, shapes are a little bit similar and it has then been tempting to start calling the, the one on the right also adsorption isotherm, but we would like to remind that these are fundamentally different. The, the horizontal axis uh, has, has different variable. So one is as a function of um, equilibrium pressure and one is as a function of uh, uh, time. So don't mix these two up. They are fundamentally different. Oh, and uh, if you are interested in how the uh, Langmuir adsorption isotherm actually uh, can be derived, there is a teaching video I've made. Uh, you can find it in YouTube. So a final point that we want to treat is, is the GPC and that quite often it's confused with being a rate and that's also not correct. At the GPC, if you take longer uh, pulse times, becomes independent of, uh, of time. Uh, that, that's also one of the hallmarks of ALD and hence it's not a time dependent uh, property. So it's not, not a rate. Uh, you shouldn't treat it as a, as a chemical rate and, and talk about kinetic rate constants. And that also makes that plotting it over uh, as a function of the temperature, like done over here, or even uh, as shown below in the schematic plot, uh, plotting the logarithm of it as a function of the inverse temperature, as sometimes is, is done, uh, is not useful. Uh, you can't do the Arrhenius analysis on it. And if you would get from that slope a uh, value, it doesn't give you an activation energy. It doesn't make sense in this case, yet it's something that we have seen uh, uh, being done both in the atomic uh, layer deposition community as well uh, recently also in atom atomic layer etching. But uh, we don't think this is this is correct. With that, we actually now come to uh, the conclusions of this talk. We think it's very important as a community that we share the same uh, idea of, of concepts and what they mean and that we get really the, the picture right. And that means also having the the good simplified cartoons uh, of representing uh, what, uh, what ALD means and how it works. And then to quote Einstein, you should make everything as simple as possible, but not simpler. And that's again what we tried here with this new uh, cartoon. Don't show that, that, that you go to a full monolay because that's not happening. You have things like steric hindrance. You're not using other group. There is some irregularity. So also then, then show that uh, in, such an, uh, in such a cartoon. With this, we would like to thank Ari Skoulas for patiently improving the ALD cartoon with us. And uh, also we would like to thank many people in the ALD uh, community for critical discussions on this uh, terminology that we have had. 
for example, in Twitter and elsewhere. And uh, you can find, if you click some of these links, you can, you can uh, join the discussions in Twitter. And then we would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>